Hey everybody, it's kind of burnt. I'm kind of burnt. I'm going to try something a little different today. I'm sick and I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but I'm going to try and power through and share my opinions on this while they're fresh. James Gunn just announced the new DCU lineup for the next 10 years or so, and I want to talk about it right quick. So here's the broad strokes. The first phase or chapter is called Gods and Monsters. That originally belonged to an animated Elseworld property under Bruce Timm. So I'm not sure if there's any correlation there other than it's just a cool title for them to use. I like that James Gunn opens up to the fact that the DC output has been disconnected and all over the place the last few years. It wasn't his fault. But taking ownership of the disconnect and being frank about his and Peter Safran's aims to fix it, it's pretty cool in my book. I'm still really intrigued by their commitment to cast actors that will play the same characters no matter what medium they're in. Film, TV, animation, video games, all of them will be portrayed by the same people, ideally. We'll see if they can actually pull it off. Appreciate distinguishing projects outside the DCU as being Elseworld titles, like the Batman Part 2 and Joker 2, etc. We'll see if those remain part of the master plan or if they're phased out over time as this new regime settles in. It's made DC money in the past, but who knows going forward. James Gunn's comments on Shazam! Fury of the Gods can almost be interpreted as they're keeping the franchise in the DCU, since it's always occupied its own corner of things. Is... This is why Zachary Levi isn't worried about the future of the franchise? Maybe I'm misunderstanding. Seems like The Flash is indeed rebooting everything. That may or may not have always been the plan. There's no Crisis or Kingdom Come movie coming, but honestly, the quicker we're done with that old DC film universe, the better. And with this Flash nonsense. Gunn also seems to suggest that the Blue Beetle movie might be included in the DCU, even though it was originally part of the previous universe. They're putting the movie in theaters, so maybe they're just genuinely proud of the movie? And maybe that figures into their plans for a Booster Gold team-up project? But I'll get to that in a minute. Aquaman 2 is mentioned alongside all these projects, so it's hard to say if this franchise is also staying on or getting kicked to the curb. Everyone thought Momoa was happy talking to Gunn because he's getting recast as Lobo, but that was pretty much all fan conjecture, right? I mean, is it possible that Momoa is just glad that Aquaman 3 is not getting cancelled or something? This is where stuff starts to get confusing. Gunn mentions a group of talented writers helping to plan the next decade of stuff in the DCU, but he doesn't outright name who they are. I just learned some of them are Drew Goddard, Tom King, and Jeremy Slater, among others. That's a pretty great talent pool right there, and that's just three names. Gunn makes it a point to say that there are more projects in this chapter of the DCU that haven't been announced yet. Scoopers initially thought we'd only get like three or five projects announced today, and we got like a dozen. <laughs> our, our cup overfloweth. I have no investment in Creature Commandos, but it looks right up my alley. If it has the same weird energy Gunn brings to all his other projects, then cool, I'll watch. Mostly it seems like a weirder animated Suicide Squad with Frankenstein in it, which is fine by me. This is where stuff gets really confusing to me. Clearly this DCU reboot isn't a hard reboot, because the rumors about Gunn keeping some of the people from Suicide Squad and Peacemaker were clearly correct. Viola Davis is coming back and getting her own show, where she teams up with characters and actors from both of those previous Gunn projects under the old guard. I'm all for Viola Davis getting more time to shine as Waller. God knows she has the acting chops for it. And the talented attached to the show is really cool, but after Dave Bautista basically said that they were doing a full-on hard reboot, and seeing that's clearly not the case, I don't know how to feel about any of this. Not to beat a dead horse here, but we lost Henry Cavill for this new universe. <laughs> what multiversal shenanigans are going to explain this away? I, I, I don't know. I am so excited for Superman Legacy, which, full disclosure, I'm not a fan of the title, but I pretty much love everything else about it. Peter Safran apparently pitched it as, like, Superman being hopeful in a time where hope seems old-fashioned. And then they chose the cover of All-Star Superman to make the announcement with, a version of Superman that some people say is idyllic and the absolute best version of the character. If I get a fraction of the hopefulness and superheroics I got from that graphic novel, I will be so happy. Gunn is writing, but no word if he's directing. He seems to revere and love the character a lot, so even if I thought he was a weird fit in the beginning, I'm fully on board now. Lantern sounds cool. 
True Detective, but with Hal Jordan and John Stewart watching over precinct Earth. All right, fine, you got me. I'm sold. Mostly, I'm just glad we're getting Green Lantern love. Unless the title of the show implies that there are other colors factoring in at this point, like maybe yellow or red lanterns. I wish there was more Kyle Rainier love, but they say there are more lanterns in it, so there's still hope for that, I guess. What's this terrifying mystery gun is referring to, by the way? I might have a theory, but I guess I'll get to that. I know very little about the Authority, except it originated at Wildstorm, which got folded into DC and then sort of never got the respect it deserved. It's really cool to see it finally getting its chance to impress in other media. It's a passion project of guns, too, so I know it will be getting the respect and attention it deserves. Interesting that they're going with the superhero group, though, instead of the Justice League. Wonder how that figures in. Paradise Lost seems cool. Wonder Woman prequel on Paradise Island in the vein of Game of Thrones. All right. Gal Gadot is an executive producer, even though it's pretty much confirmed she's not returning to play Wonder Woman herself. I wonder what that means. No pun intended. I was not emotionally ready (laughs) for the Brave and the Bold announcement. A Batman and Robin movie, but not just any Robin. Damian Wayne, Bruce Wayne's son. First introduced in the Grant Morrison run of Batman that is one of my all-time favorite storylines of Batman in any medium. If this movie is half as weird and insane as that comic series was, I will give you all of my money. And there's a rumor that more of the Bat family is showing up. If we can get, like, Dick Grayson, Barbara Gordon, Tim Drake... Jason Todd. This can't come soon enough. And Matt Reeves' The Batman Part 2 is still happening. I don't have to choose which Batman. Booster Gold TV series. I love the character, but I don't have much to say, other than I'm glad he's finally getting his time to shine. Hopefully this leads to a team-up project with Blue Beetle after literal years of fans wanting that exact thing. I gotta ask, though, uh, why are they bringing time travel into the DCU so early? Other than the Flash, of course. I just, I'm just wondering how that's going to affect things. Uh, this Supergirl project intrigues me. Tom King wrote the source material. She seems deliberately being set up to contrast against Superman's hopefulness with a more jaded personality. Is this also being set in space? Is it more of a hard sci-fi movie? I'm also wondering, given what Supergirl's history traditionally deals with, like the fall of Krypton, the bottle city of Kandor, Brainiac, is it possible this terrifying mystery Gunn mentions is actually setting up Brainiac to be the overarching villain of Gods and Monsters? That's just me shooting in the dark, really. And Swamp Thing. I love this character, and I'm so happy he's back. Please give me a full-on horror spectacle. Please. A friend of mine just told me that Guillermo del Toro was cited the other day buying Swamp Thing comics, and my heart skipped a beat. (laughs) Swamp Thing returning is news enough, but the idea of del Toro directing? My god, don't, don't, don't tempt me. Gunn seems sincere in his love for DC and its characters, so I choose to believe him when he says that this is going to be a creator-driven ecosystem, where each project is allowed to be its own thing, have its own voice, and the storytelling comes first instead of some corporate mandate. Storytelling is king. That's that's literally what he says. It's a weird lineup, I gotta admit, but I think he's basically sold me on it all working, on his frankness and his enthusiasm alone. I didn't know what to think about this lineup, but... I think you can officially consider me excited for the future of the DC universe again. Anyway, I rushed through that and now I'm exhausted. I'm going to wrap it up here. If you would like me to do more of these, please let me know in the comments. Uh, Like, subscribe, ring the bell, tell your friends. I like doing these things. Hopefully I can start doing them again pretty regularly when I get well again. Until next time, friends, I will see you later. Burnout.